China has banned the import of Taiwanese pineapples, but now they're more popular than ever before. Would you like one? Yes, <laughs> and today we're going to tell you about Taiwan's pineapple pride and taste some pineapple products. I'm Natalie So. And I'm Andrew Ryan. Let's start with a look at the stories on our radar. The vaccines have arrived. Taiwan received its first batch of the COVID-19 vaccine, 117,000 doses in total, on Wednesday. It's part of a 10 million dose order Taiwan has placed with AstraZeneca. The Food and Drug Administration is now inspecting the vaccines, a process that officials say normally takes 30 to 40 days. Reservoirs across Taiwan are showing their dry underbellies amid a water shortage. Water levels in one Xinju County reservoir have fallen so low that remnants of buildings that once stood on the reservoir site could be seen. Water levels in Taiwan's iconic Sun Moon Lake are also at the lowest level in 20 years. Shoshan Zoo in Kaohsiung is getting a facelift to the tune of 500 million NT dollars, about 18 million US dollars. The zoo will build aerial bridges, and if taking selfies with the meerkats, llamas, and lions isn't exciting enough, visitors can now pose with wildlife-themed murals, floating sheep balloons, and abstract sculptures of animals. Taiwan celebrated the Lantern Festival this past week with an array of local festivities. A temple in Ilan held a procession featuring the goddess Mazu that this year is designed to drive away COVID and other illnesses. Meanwhile, in the Penghu Islands, people held traditional celebrations featuring giant turtle decorations that symbolize good fortune and prosperity. So the big story this week is pineapples, right, Andrew? Yeah, look at my shirt. That's right. I like that <laughs> shirt. And would you like some fresh pineapple from I Taiwan? I love some. So Taiwan has very juicy and sweet pineapples. Mmm. Mm. Perfect mixture of sweet and sour, right? Yeah, it's great. Tangy, too. Mm. I love it. It's funny. I thought these were out of season, but actually, this They're is really delicious. They're just starting, I think. And uh, it's big in the news. We'll be telling you all about that, right, Andrew? That's right. Let's start off with some infographics from Taiwan Next Gen Foundation. So China banned the import of Taiwanese pineapples starting on March 1st. It said they were full of harmful bugs that threatened China's agriculture and environment. But Taiwan disputes these accusations. Last year, 99.79% of our pineapples met their standards. So obviously, China is messing with Taiwan. Mm. Now, how big of an impact would this ban have on Taiwan? Well, in 2020, Taiwan produced over 430,000 tons of pineapples, and 12% of those pineapples were exported. Almost all of those went to China. China imported 97%, while Japan imported 2%, and Hong Kong 1%. Now, we're way too reliant on China, but we can't blame the farmers mm. because, you know, they're right next door, and they speak the same language, and... Uh, we like the same things, actually, often. That's right. But it's not just pineapples. Have a look at this. 100% of Taiwan's beetle nuts go to China. That's the exports we're talking about, of course. 98% of the exports of wax apples go there as well. And significant percentages of custard apples, grapefruit, and sweet oranges. So I guess we obviously like the same fruits, huh? They're good fruit. They are good fruit. I and we obviously need to diversify our markets. Taiwan's government is working to bring our pineapples now to Australia, Malaysia, Singapore, and the United States. Now, the good news is that people here in Taiwan are snapping up the pineapples. They're trying to make up for the loss of that uh, Chinese market. They're very good. So the question is, what percentage of that have we made up for so far? 100%. That's right. And in just four days. Can you believe it? That's amazing. It's amazing. So that's Taiwanese pineapple pride for you, right? That's right. Now, in just a moment in Hashtag Taiwan, we're going to tell you how the internet responded to the pineapple panic. But first, have a look at this guy who is peeling a pineapple. For around 10 years, Wu Geng Hao's food stall has been serving the town of Puzi in southern Taiwan. However fresh his produce might be, his customers mostly remember the stall because of the show they are treated to when they stop by. His technique is one part of his secret, but then there's the blade he wields, a custom knife made of black steel. He says this helps with the cutting process. Wu is a master with a knife. He can turn a whole pineapple into bite-sized pieces ready to serve in around just 12 seconds. 
He often does this several times in a row, earning him the local nickname, the Pineapple Man. You might have already heard that earlier this week, China banned pineapple imports from Taiwan. China's announcement came right before the pineapple harvest season, so pineapple farmers were looking at a lot of product with no place to go. Local leaders took notice of the pineapple predicament and started pitching in. Politicians at every level took to social media to talk about how much they love pineapple and encouraged people to buy pineapples from local Taiwanese farmers. And when I say every level, I mean the president, the vice president, the premier, the legislative speaker, legislators, cabinet ministers, city councilors, mayors, Andrew Ryan, all made posts supporting pineapple farmers. Even the American and Japanese representative offices in Taiwan took to Facebook to say, don't forget how delicious Taiwanese pineapples are. The Canadian representative office said they loved pineapple on pizza, which, all right, I'll do it for the farmers. Taiwan's message to China was clear. It was, fine, don't import our sweet, delicious pineapples. We'll keep them for ourselves. And you know what? It totally worked. People were buying up pineapples like they were going extinct. Popular Taiwanese internet personality Holger Chen reportedly spent half a million new Taiwan dollars on local pineapples. Taiwanese celebrity Shou Luo also supposedly bought 200 cases of pineapples as well. Heck, even we had little trouble finding pineapples for our show this week. This isn't the first time China's gotten heavy-handed with an import from another country. Last year, they imposed steep, steep tariffs on Australian wine amid souring relations. In response, Taiwan was like, well, if China don't want Australian wine, we'll take it. Back then, Taiwan's foreign ministry tweeted, We stand in solidarity with Australia by serving hashtag Freedom Wine at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs Taiwan. Now, I'm not saying that the hashtag Freedom Wine campaign was an absolute success, but the last time I drank red wine with my Uncle Dennis, he definitely pulled out a lot of bottles from Australia. Taiwan's foreign minister, Joseph Wu, must have thought, Well, that worked pretty well. Why don't we do it again? Thus, the hashtag Freedom Pineapple was born. Hashtag Freedom Pineapple caught on and people are now using it online to show support for Taiwan. Anyway, I'm going to end with this tweet Andrew Ryan sent out. It says, All of Taiwan right now. And then there's a gif of Joey Tribbiani from Friends looking lovingly at a pineapple. 1300 likes. That's pretty viral. Anyway, I'm going to go call my Uncle Dennis. Gotta tell him to ease up on the pineapple. Now, this is not the first time that Taiwan's pineapple farmers have had to uh, think themselves out of a predicament. That's right. Something similar happened 40 years ago, and they came up with a very creative and delicious solution. And Stash Butler is here to tell us all about it. Yeah, well, speaking of creative and delicious solutions, I have some for you to try right yes. here. Pineapple cake. Yeah, that's right. Oh, look at that. Look at that. It's so look beautiful. That. Looks beautiful. gorgeous. Yeah. It's a beautiful gift, which people like to do. Um, give them to friends and there family. You Thank and you for the I gift. <laughs> Thank you. And they're beautifully wrapped. That's and right. And very easy to open. Yep. So tell us what all about pineapple cakes. Yeah, so these pineapple cakes, pineapple cakes are essentially kind of like your, you know, bog standard pastry made out of egg, milk, flour, and butter surrounding a kind of pineapple jam. And mm. normally that jam is, uh, also contains a fruit called winter melon. So well. this is this is actually like a short cake, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's kind of it's it's yeah, it's kind of like a harder kind of pastry surrounding uh, a shell inside. What do you what do you make of that so far? Mm. Good. No. Nice. Really? Wow, there's yeah. a lot of jam in this one. So these ones are actually vegan. So I don't know if that they but can you taste the difference? I I can't to be honest. They taste wonderful. They're very good. Yeah. The uh, the outside is a little bit sweeter than I remember. Usually oh, right. it has very little sugar or salt or anything in I'm it. I'm going to give it a go as well. And the inside is very nice and tart. It mm. is. Mm. So you know the history about why these came uh, into existence, right? Yeah, that's right. So in the 1930s, uh, Taiwan was a big producer of pineapples, and they shipped a lot of those pineapples abroad, normally in kind of canned form, essentially, uh, all over the world. Then when uh, Taiwan's economy started growing in the 60s or so, and lots of people started moving away from farms and into factories and stuff and working in industry, uh, obviously wages went up. And that meant that when the Philippines started producing pineapples and also doing that, would well, they have a lot lower wages, meant that Taiwanese pineapples couldn't compete, really, mm. okay. with Filipino prices. So from that, they, the, the, the industry decided to concentrate more on domestic sales. And that meant selling fresh pineapples to Taiwanese consumers. 
but that wasn't enough to compensate for the loss of demand. Mm. So they basically uh, had to come up with a creative way of, you know, what do we make with these spare pineapples we have that will keep so they won't go off, obviously, because pineapples will go bad if you just leave them, and, and that Taiwanese people will love. Mm. And that was the humble pineapple cake. Wow, so this is actually not that old. This is not a really traditional well, delicacy. Well, there are some, there's some disagreement about when, you know, they were first kind of made. Um, but in terms of the, as we know them today and, you know, in that form and as popular as they are now, that kind of really began in the 70s or 80s. Mm. So they're also one of our most popular souvenirs, right? Yeah, People like that's to right. take them with them when they leave Taiwan. Yeah, I mean, obviously they're nice and portable. Um, and they don't go off. And yeah, people love to come to Taiwan for food products. And yeah, pineapple well, cakes are definitely up there. Why do you think they are so popular? Do you think it's a flavor thing or a promotional thing? I think it's a mix of the two. I mean, I think that, I mean, you can't deny they taste amazing. Um, they're a great, like, perfect snack-sized thing. It's true. Yes. Yeah. So easy mm. to yeah. share, right? Yeah. And give away. <laughs> and, uh, and then, yeah, you're, but it's also a promotion thing. So the Taipei City government has been running these... Uh, kind of festivals, I guess, where they uh, celebrate pineapple cakes and have competitions about who makes the best pineapp pineapple cakes. Um, and so that's really helped to promote pineapple cakes as a kind of symbol of Taiwan. They're you all guys good. have tried making them before, right? Mm. Yeah, I think Andrew and I have both made them. Um, it's, a, it's a fairly simple process, but for both of us, we skipped the first step. So when I made <laughs> them, they already had the jam ready. Yeah. Um, and from then, it's just, you know, making a normal kind of pastry and then fitting them into these nice little cute square <laughs> molds. Yeah. Mold. That yeah. is so cool. Yeah. Yeah. So great. this great. is another uh, symbol of Taiwan's pineapple pride, right? That's right. Mm. Mm, I got my mouth full. I'm not going to do an ending. <laughs> <laughs> Natalie, save me. <laughs> so next up, brain game. March 8th is International Women's Day, so I wanted to shine the spotlight on Taiwan's most famous television chef, and that is Fu Pei Mei. Cool. Do you guys know who she is? I've heard of her. Yeah. You set her up like that, but I Well, we know because you told us, is. right? No? <laughs> I don't know who that is. So one of you has heard of her, one of you has not. Mm. Don't worry, all of these uh, are true or false questions. So it doesn't matter too much. 50-50, I like these 50 odds. 50 all right. For our very first question, true or false, in 1971, the New York Times referred to her in an article as the Julia Child of Chinese cooking. True. I would say true. That's very specific. But that long ago. Yes, wow. that is true, back in 1971. Oh. Wow. All right, so for our second question, in 1962, she became the very first host of a cooking show on TV in Taiwan. You can see the show is called Fu Pei Mei Si Jin. Her name was Fu Pei Mei, so it's Fu Pei Mei's time. Very simple set. Mm -hmm. Now, true or false, her show ran for a total of 30 years. Sounds true. 1962, 1992, yeah, that sounds plausible. True. Actually, I hate to tell it to you, it's, it's false. It longer? was for 40 years. Okay. Whoa. That's right. Wow. All right, next question. True or false, when she got married, she was not a very good cook. True. I think I heard that somewhere. <laughs> yeah? I'm, I'm going to follow with Nat Natalie Good. True. That is correct. Okay. So here's the story. Apparently, when That's she first got married, cool. her husband used to complain about her cooking and Are say it was serious? so bad, right? <laughs> That's amazing. And she decided to spend her dowry going to local restaurants and asking for lessons from master chefs. Oh, wow. And this is very unusual at the time because wow. back then it, they would only teach, it was male chefs and they would only teach their male apprentices. So for wow. a woman to go and learn these dishes was very unusual that at the time. That is so cool. It really elevated her. Wow. In her first show, she had to debone and deep fry a fish on live television in just five minutes. Have a look at this. So for this dish, she had to fry it up to look like a squirrel's tail. Very, very Ooh. difficult carving of the fish required. So true or false, she was so nervous uh, during that five-minute episode that she cut her finger. <gasps> it sounds like it's true. Leslie? I would say false. <laughs> Actually, Leslie, you're right. Okay. okay. Um, but something else bad happened. Oh. She oh. forgot to bring a knife. Oh, okay. So when she got to the studio, she had to borrow a knife, but it was so blunt, nobody had sharpened it. Oh, no. You can actually see her struggling to cut the fish apart because you have to oh, hack the oh, head off oh and everything. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
She did well for herself anyways. <laughs> yes, she did very well for herself. Clearly they liked what they saw and she continued to host for another 40 years. Final question, true or false? Fu Pei Mei and Julia Child passed away one month apart. I'm going to say true again. Mm. I believe everything you say, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say false. Okay. Actually, Natalie, you're right. Oh. Okay. So they both passed away in the summer of 2004. However, Julia Child was 91 and Fu Pei Mei was 72. Oh, yeah. okay. But her legacy definitely lives along. I have a couple more fun facts for you. Sure. First of all, she wrote 30 plus cookbooks in her years wow, in English amazing. and Chinese. Yep. She spoke fluent Japanese. Also, have a look at this picture. This is a That's Google cute. Doodle Aww. that they created for Aww. her about 12 years after she passed away, and it features some of her most famous dishes in that shot. You can also see the camera and the microphone there. Also, another fun thing, if you want to learn about her life, there's a mini-series that was on Taiwan television, oh. which is now available on Netflix. Oh. Have a look at this. It's called What She Put on the Table. So that is available oh. to international viewers all around the wow. world. Uh, and I have one more special thing to announce. On the March 6th edition of Feast Meets West, I will be cooking one of her dishes. So you guys uh, have to tune in and see how well or how what badly did you cook? I did. What did you cook? I did sombao nyoro, which is oh. a stir-fried okay. beef and Sounds green onions. Sounds pretty doable. Yeah. 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 So we'll have a Make look. Make some for us next time, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, Sounds great. So there you have it. That is uh, a look at Fu Pei Mei the Julia Child of Chinese cooking from right here in Taiwan. And our question of the week is all about pineapples. What is your favorite way to eat a pineapple? Andrew. Excellent question. I love to eat really? it with bitter gourd. You wow. can either put it in a soup with some bitter gourd and chicken, or you can make a little shake, a little smoothie out of pineapple and bitter gourd. Interesting. Yum, you've got sweet, sour, and bitter. Sounds good. Very balanced. Oh, yeah. But I don't know if it sounds good. I'm trying to like it's delicious. encourage you. Trust yeah. me. Uh, that doesn't sound appetizing to me the least. Uh, my favorite way is canned. Really? And there's a reason for this. There's oh, a story. No. There's oh, a no. story to this. Uh, growing up in Taiwan, my grandma, she would cut a lot of fruit, fresh mm. fruit, mangoes, guavas, and wax apples. And she would also cut fresh pineapples, but she always had can canned pineapple in the fridge. Uh -huh. And that was just for her. Uh, and I was always what? thinking, like, why would Grandma love canned pineapples? It was always like this holy grail that I couldn't touch. <laughs> and I realize now, I think it's a generational thing because of what Stash said. Yeah, right. there was such a prominent uh, canned pineapple industry, and it's a nostalgic thing. Right? Yeah, yeah. 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 So, it's, so it's just young Leslie just thinking, like, I want that. <laughs> the, grandma's I want grandmas. Yeah. <laughs> How about you? Okay, so I like them in a smoothie. Get it upside down. <laughs> smoothie. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Okay, and I'm going to share that with you guys. Oh, wonderful. I made a pineapple smoothie. Ooh. Oh, yeah. For you guys, it's really delicious. But first, I want to show you what I discovered recently a really cool pineapple water bottle. Take a look at that. And it says, Live a Pineapple Life. Oh, yes. Stand tall. Stand tall. Wear a crown. Wear a crown. And be sweet on the inside. Oh, I love it. Isn't it great? It's <laughs> like Taiwan's pineapple pie. Nothing right? about wearing the pineapple. Yes. Yeah, and wear it on the outside, too. <laughs> with our pineapples. <laughs> I made this this morning. Oh, it's very oh, good. Wow. That Look looks that. fresh. That looks delicious. So there's pineapple and also bananas, which Taiwan Ooh. also grows. Love that. And pineapple some bananas. coconut milk inside of this, too. Mmm. How do you guys like it? Oh, that's, that's good. It's very tropical. That's very nice. Good, right? The little, pineapple flavor wow. is very strong. A little reminder that we live on a subtropical island. Oh, this mm. is so good. Mm. This is really, really good. Wow, <laughs> Natalie. Hats off to you. It's got the perfect amount of pulp. Good balance. Great balance. Mm. Wow. So there's a whole big pineapple in here. Really? You yeah. got a whole pineapple in Well, there's in a little bit more. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you got the sweet, the sour, and wonderful. And the milkiness, yeah. And the milkiness. That's right. So if, you're, you, if you can't do dairy, then you can still have this. All right. Alrighty. Well, thank you so much for joining us for this edition of Taiwan Insider. Be sure to connect with us on social media. Yes, and leave a comment. We would love to hear from you. Uh, like us, subscribe. For Taiwan Insider, I'm Natalie So. I'm Leslie Liao. And I'm Andrew Ryan. Go buy some pineapples. <laughs>